I am happy to be with you all today because I have really exciting news. Well, it's exciting for me. I got a therapist. Before I get into anything, please subscribe to my channel if you're watching this. You would do me a big, big favor. And yes, I am thirsty. I realize that I can't keep raving about the wonders of therapy if I didn't actually have a therapist myself. So I went out and got one and I'm actually really happy about the outcome so far. We've had three sessions and I really like it. You'll hear this a lot from mental health professionals, but the therapist also needs a therapist. It's such a taxing career to have to be, you know, just emotionally open and, and giving and hearing some really tough things day in and day out and being constantly surrounded by the inner workings of other people's minds. And it can really be a lot of emotional strain when you are a mental health practitioner. So getting a therapist is incredibly important. Just to tell you all a little bit about my therapy journey, I got therapy in my first semester or no, my second semester, my freshman year in college, and it was okay, but it was towards the end of the semester. Um, I remember like them telling me they couldn't really help me, which was sad and nobody wants to hear that. And I just never went back because I don't think it was the best experience for me. Now that I'm in a PhD program in psychology, I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I should give this another try, especially because this is such a trying time in my life. and. In the lives of many right now. I am going through a lot of adjustments and transitions with moving back home and also starting a PhD program and trying to find my balance between work and school. Things were adding up a lot and I fortunately know my my indicators of anxiety so like I get like a really tight chest or like the the right side of my chest starts to hurt a lot when I am feeling overwhelmed and stressed and then it's also hard for me to get like a deep breath so kind of those anxious tendencies or things that tell me okay you know breathe slow down something's not right I had also started losing hair and that was the final straw for me because black women do not mess with our hair so I went to office hours for one of my professors and he you know, he suggested or he recommended that everyone have a therapist. And I definitely thought he was right about that. So first I tried Psych Today, which I have my opinions about. So if you don't know, psychologytoday.com has a find a therapist link and you can put in a whole bunch of information like your location and the problems that you're dealing with. You can also specify if you want a man or a woman. You can also specify race, I believe, or you can at least specify your race and then it'll find people who are skilled in working with that specific population. So I went on there and I tried about like three different therapists and the results were subpar. I had two therapists not even spell my name right. and. Come on, like that is just the basic sign of respect. My name is not difficult at all. And I believe I even signed it Brie, B-R-I, that's three letters. <laughs> One of my really good friends told me that I should try Therapy for Black Girls. Therapy for Black Girls is a phenomenal resource for black women and honestly, I feel like for women of color in general for finding a therapist. It's a podcast, so like listening to just things that affect black women because you know the pandemic racism all these things are affecting everyone but there are special considerations that black women have when it comes to working and living and experiencing this world and i found that therapy for black girls is it's like it's like home it's like i listen to it and it's like i have a piece of home because i it just talks about all of the mental and emotional and physical stress that black women, women of color go through. So they also have a find a therapist locator where you can input your uh, location and they have verified therapists who have been verified by the website. And you can find black women or black men who specialize in working with other black women. And I found that extremely helpful and that's how I found my current therapist. So my family knows this, but I am really big on 
signs or like signs from God. I, I love coincidences. I love just little things here and there that kind of let you know that everything is okay. And I read this book one time, it was called When God Winks at You. And it was basically just about those little occurrences in your life that kind of assure you and affirm you that you're on the right path. And so when I met with my therapist this last time, um, we just started talking about, you know, family and like my family dynamics. And um, I don't know what made me ask her, but I asked her when she was born, like what her birthday was. And she told me that she's turning like the same age on the same date as my mother and i was like that is so interesting like what are the odds that you have the exact same birthday as my mom and not to get too personal but one of the things i was looking for was a black woman therapist who could kind of have more of a maternal mentoring kind of relationship with me because i feel like that's something that i have been lacking the past couple of years um I definitely do have mentors and I do have my mother, uh, but I wanted just um, someone who was kind of outside of my own personal development and who could also serve in that role, if that makes sense. It was also tricky for me because I wanted to find someone who was Christian and spiritual and it was hard for me because I I feel like I'm a, a good <laughs> Christian, but I know I'm not like a fundamentalist Christian. And I know that I have views that don't jive well with a lot of the, the Christian community. And so I wanted a therapist who was also Christian, but there's kind of like a, a Christianity, like religious acculturation scale. It's like, how Christian are you? And what kind of, you know, <laughs> what kind of Christian are you? So I wanted someone who could still affirm me in my views and also in my spirit and that's exactly what I found. Also, you can probably tell I have a new swivel chair. So I've been, it's like a stool and I just love sitting on this thing. Like, here, let me show you a little bit. Yeah, it's like a little white stool. Getting a therapist also was, I think it allowed me to kind of get in that mindset of what my future clients are gonna feel like when they walk through the door. My goal is to always make it, you know, a very affirming and liberating environment when I am conducting therapy eventually, but I just, I really resonated with the feelings of just anxiety and nervousness when you're about to meet your therapist and all that goes into finding it, trying to make sure that your insurance aligns and is accepted. You know, all of those things I think are so important for every potential therapist to go through and experience because that is what our clients are walking in with. It also made me, cognizant of all the barriers that still exist when trying to receive mental health care. I mean, I'm someone who has health care insurance and it was still hard to find, you know, the exact right fit. And it's frustrating because you don't want to go from therapist to therapist, explaining your issues over and over, doing intakes over and over to get help. You know, ideally you would see one person and they can help you through what you're going through and serve as your therapist but that's not always the case because of all the barriers of location insurance and uh, personal like therapeutic alliance between the client and therapist i also resonate with the feelings of self-disclosure and like, not wanting to open up right off the bat i mean like i said my therapist was everything i was looking for and it was still hard for me to talk in a very a deep and vulnerable way you know i consider myself someone who does like to present and i i think i'm authentic but i think that i limit you know how much i let people into my life and so getting to i'm still i'm still working on it it's only been three weeks <laughs> but getting to kind of have that like cathartic just experience expression of everything that's been going on even if it doesn't feel like it's coherent and having someone make sense of my experiences and my thoughts and it was it was really affirming it was really validating and it made me feel good because I think every day we walk around with these heavy burdens on us and we can't we can't express them there's no outlet other than you know 
watching TV and trying to like dissociate or some people write it out, but sometimes you just want more. And that's what I wanted. And I'm so glad that I found it. And I really encourage everyone who, honestly, everyone, you don't even have to be necessarily going through something, you know, I'm not in a depressed state or anything like that, but I still went because only good can come from it when you find the right therapist. So that's all from me today. I just wanted to update you and tell you that I got a therapist and I'm excited to continue to update you all and I'll probably be, you know, adding little tidbits of things that she tells me. Um, but I'll leave you with this. One thing that we're working on is my self-esteem and overall self-confidence. And she told me that every time someone compliments me now, instead of saying thank you, to just say, I accept that, which feels very conceited and honestly really unnatural. And I haven't done it yet, but it's such power in accepting someone's words of affirmation. Not just thank you, that's too passive and that's too, you know, it's not genuine. Say, I accept that. Accept that compliment and that affirmation for yourself and see how your confidence changes over the week of doing that. All right, loves, thanks for tuning in and I will see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe.